So, okay, focus it on. Okay, let's start. The good, bad, and angry. The good things is the Mountain West Ruby Conference. <laughs> You know, I'm a Mormon, so, so the, in this conference, the, m many of you are also Mormons. Of course, this is all a city. But, you know, in, in, back in Japan, virtually no one, in, has, in, no one in the community has the same face as me. So this is kind of weird, and that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, besides that, the, the hospitality of that co this conference is... Uh, great, and uh, th I think this is uh, the, the, we we should appreciate uh, Mike Moore there. Yeah, the bad things is my Galaxy Note two. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you know, this morning, out of nowhere, that went to break. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, you know, the, in the very beginning of this journey, my uh, micro SD card uh, did, died. So the, all the backup was gone. Then, a few days later, my phone, there, it was dead. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> so I have to buy a new one. You know, the, my last one, the Galaxy Nexus, was dead in six months, and this, this new one, the Galaxy Note 2, was dead in six months. <laughs> Probably someone in the Samsung hates me. <laughs> anyway, the ugly one, this keynote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, this is very unfortunate that you don't understand Japanese. <laughs> if you do, I will I will give you a very excellent presentation in Japanese. <laughs> but unfortunately, you don't. So you have to stand. Okay. And uh, in the beginning of the keynote, I, I, have, I have to tell you very important things first. So the Ruby 1.8 will die soon, in a, in a few months. So move to Ruby 2.0 now. Right now. Right now. So in the past, we had uh, we made several releases since Ruby. Uh, the first version was 0 0.95, so we had a bunch of releases in the past. The, some of, some of them are good, some of them are very bad. For example, the 1.8.7 uh, that has a real tragedy. So. It, it provides a new method named the symbol to proc, and uh, it was incompatible with the uh, symbol to proc defined in the active record. Then that slight incompatibility crossed rails. So the many people in the community uh, boycotted uh, the 187 back then. So that is the very unfortunate. And, uh, the other example of the bad release is 1.0. The, we made a huge incompatibility from 1.8 to 1.9. For example, we introduced a new virtual machine uh, called named Yav, yet another Ruby virtual machine. And we also introduced uh, the M17M multilingualization, which is the uh, we can uh, handle the virtually every single uh, character encodings on the earth. So we can use Unicode, we can use the Russian encoding, we, we can use Japanese encoding, Chinese encoding, so a lot of other encodings without any conversion to, to the central uh, uh, encodings like Unicode. The other uh, languages like Java and Python use the, the centralized approach. So they have to uh, com convert everything into Unicode. Then to, pro uh, to, 
process text uh, inside as an Unicode text, then convert back to the, the original encoding at the, at the output. But the, the, maybe some of you may know that the, the character encoding conversion uh, open up the can of worms. So it's kind of like a hell. So we try to avoid that kind of conversion. But I, I believe that that approach was uh, very good, but the still uh, it in introduced the uh, incompatibility from 1A. One, one so it took five years for the, to the community to adopt the 1.9 and uh, gradually 2.0. But now Rails 4 does not support Ruby 1.8, so it's it's good time to move on. So, so recently we had released uh, Ruby 2.0. So this in this keynote I was going to uh, talk about uh, the new feature, but uh, I I have to tell you that Ruby 2.0 was the happiest release ever. So that no one, virtually no one, complained about the Ruby 2.0. So then the every, everyone, the, I went to the conference, like, like I say, I, I went to the WASA conference held by Heroku a month ago. So the, the, every people uh, told me that the congratulation about the Ruby 2.0 and the 20th anniversary of the, of the language. And the, so I, feel, I felt very happy, so I, I declare the Ruby 2.0 as the, the happiest latest ever. <laughs> and uh, it's faster than Ruby 1.9, and uh, it's better, than, better and stable than Ruby 1.9. And uh, we try to make it 100% uh, compatible with 1.9. Actually, it's, it's kind of impossible, just because you know, we fixed uh, many bugs from 1.9, so the fixing bug uh, introduce the slight incompatibility. But, but we try to make it very uh, compatible. So I started uh, developing Ruby on February 24, 1993. So it was 20 years ago. I started developing uh, Ruby, and uh, it, the date was uh, the day I named it as Ruby. So the and, uh, software and the programming language is kind of like a concept, no physical entity. So the name is pretty important for the entity. So the, I choose the, the day I name it as the birthday of the language. Then, so two years later, the December 21st, 1995, I released it to the public and, and then to the internet. So the, the version back then was version 0.95. Then, uh, December, 1990, December 1996, we released version 1.0. So August 1997, 1.1. Uh, December 1998, 1.2. Uh, so then we released, the, uh, we uh, fit, uh, introduced a new rule as a, the if odd number version is as a, the development, development version. And the even number is a uh, stable version. So in August 1999, we introduced the E1.4. September 20, 20th, uh, 2000, we introduced the 1.6. So virtually, we introduced uh, versions in the, the Christmas vacation or summer vacation. So August 23. We released it every year, basically. Then the, the, the pace was slowed down. August 2003, we released 1.8. December 2007, 1.9.0. Uh, August 2010, 1.2.2. October 2011, 1.9.3. So the version numbers goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> so we go up like this, then we saturated some kind of that. <laughs> you know that? The, the version number is very limited resource. <laughs> <laughs> we, we decide that uh, every, uh, every num digit uh, in, in the version number it should be the one digit. 
So we had 1.9.1, 1.9.2, then 1.9.9, but we are not going to have the 1.9.10. So I'm, I'm, I'm old timer, timer so I, I use the LS a lot. So, so we list the, the version numbers. So 1.1.1, 1. 1. 1.2, 1. 1.3, but but if you introduce the 1.10, 1.1, 1.10, 1.2, I don't like that. <laughs> so the, the version number is very limited, Lasers. So that introduces some kind of a psychological barrier for the version numbers. So and, uh, the Ruby developers version, for Ruby developers, version numbers is very important. So the 1.9 has this feature, 1.9.2 has this feature, that, 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 or that. But for the core developers like us, so the version number is nothing. So we fix bugs every day, we introduce new features every day, we improve the performance every day, so version number is uh, nothing. We have trunk, we have trunk. <laughs> so so the, there is very big conflict between the core developers and the, the Ruby users and the community as a whole. So that, that is one of the reasons of the psychological barrier. But, but somehow we uh, overcome, overcame the, the psychological barrier, so <laughs> we released the version two <laughs> of the language, uh, finally. <laughs> On February 24th, 1913, uh, this year, so it, it is uh, Ruby's 20th birthday. So back in Japan, the 20th, 20th birthday is the day the uh, person or child become adult. So Ruby is adult now. <laughs> so we call it, uh, we call it uh, anniversary driven development. <laughs> or ADD. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Ruby, Rubyists, Ruby people, Ru the people in the Ruby community loves events like the conferences, like meetups. We have a lot of conferences out there. The Ruby conference, Mountain West Ruby conference, Lone Star Ruby conference, uh, Golden Gate Ruby conference, and a lot of others or the, in the States. And uh, in, back in Japan, we have the, the Ruby Kagi conference. Uh, and uh, in Europe, we have Euroco. Uh, this year, we will we have Euroco in Greece, in Athens, Athens, Greece. So we have a lot of conferences, a lot of events, a lot of meetings. So, so we love events. So the, the we uh, encourage the software development uh, driven by these kind of the events, event-driven development. <laughs> so that is one of the driving force for us, for developers, to uh, set forth the Ruby, the language, and the implementation. So then the Ruby, <coughs> as Ruby 2.0, I'd like to seek, seek the origin of the Ruby 2. So I seek back in my document, the documentation and the keynote file slides and the, we f I finally found the, the earliest uh, reference of the Ruby 2 in Ru the keynote of the RubyCon 2001. <laughs> 12 years ago? Whoa. And Tampa, Florida is the, it's the, the first RubyCon. The first RubyConf. The, remember that in the Ruby year 2001 was the, uh, the, the, the year we had 9-11. And right, right, uh, RubyConf 2001 was uh, had, uh, organized right after that, that event. So you remember that Tom, uh, Florida, we had uh, some kind of the anthrax problem there. So, it was quite amazing. So everyone in, in my family member was worried about it when I told them I, I'm going to the Florida, so the, to take care of the anthrax or something like that. <laughs> anyway, so then in the keynote of the Rubicon 2001, I mentioned about the Ruby 2, which has the new, which should introduce a new virtual machine, new garbage collector, and then that should introduce the native threads. So I tried, I wanted new VM for performance, and that new VM was implemented by Ruby 
uh, 1.9. So I, we try to uh, improve the garbage collection for performance and, uh, and the generation of garbage collector. So that, that plan itself was a cancel just because you know, the, the, the object allocation scheme uh, strategy was changed in Ruby 1. Back, back then we had a Ruby 1.6. 1. Then the, the object allocation strategy was changed, so the generation garbage collection has uh, less effective. So that, that project itself was canceled, but Ruby 1.9 improved the garbage collector, then uh, it introduced the lazy sweeping, which uh, shortened the, the, the pastime from the garbage collector. And then Ruby 2.0 introduced a bitmap mapping, uh, which is the copy and write friendly, uh, and uh, we are working on the partially, partially generation of garbage collector for Ruby 2.1. We are not we're now working on. And uh, nat for native threads, so Ruby 1.9 uses native threads with uh, global interpreter lock. Uh, global interpreter lock, everyone has global interpreter lock, but uh, it's, without that, we have to put the fine grain lock everywhere so lock, unlock, lock, unlock, lock, unlock. So it, it slows down the interpreter a lot. So no one wants slow Ruby 1, Ruby 1.9, Ruby 2.0. So it's kind of the compromise. So to, to remove the, the global interpreter lock without uh, hindering performance, so we have to re-implement the every data structure in the interpreter as a lock free or something. So that is a huge effort. So our uh, resource is very limited, so it's kind of compromised. Anyway, the Ruby 2 in 2001 is almost accomplished by Ruby 1.9. So the, the origin of the Ruby 2.0 today is uh, something appeared later, which, which, it, which I seeked, I found in the keynote of the RubyConf 2003, 10 years ago. Whoa. The, in the keynote of, in the RubyConf 2003, we, I, I proposed the new hash literals, keyword arguments, method combination, and selector namespace. And the new hash literals is the, the, the hash that which, whose key is the symbols can be written as the, the the below ones. So new hash literals are introduced in 1.9, and uh, the other ones, like a method combination, which allows a method decoration afterwards, and the selector namespace is kind of like a scope monkey patching, was uh, these are uh, uh, implemented in some shape in 3.2.0. So, let me introduce about the detail of the new features in Ruby 2.0. So Ruby, new features in Ruby 2.0 has a new key, uh, keyword argument, the module prepend, enumerable, lazy, and refinements, and the symbol array literals, and the two edge conversion method, UTF-8 by default, DTRS, and trace point, for, for, to name a few. So let me introduce first about, about the keyword arguments. So keyword arguments is the, the named optional argument, no specific order, and descriptive, and easy to remember. So this, this is kind of like a, the uh, new hash literals put in the, the, the end, end of the uh, argument list, like this. So the calling log, log method with the uh, argument, and the, level, uh, the named argument. It is possible in Ruby 1.9, which, uh, which has the uh, new hash literal. But uh, to use the, the keyword arguments is 1.9, you have to uh, decompose the hash by yourself. But this is, this is kind of pity, and uh, some, some part of the rails use that kind of the keyword arguments already. But uh, what, what if the, you want to combine with the arbitrary number of arguments or the descriptive, descriptive exceptions or the pass new as a valid value? So the keyword arguments in Ruby 1.9 go like, if, 
if you want the, that kind of the, uh, de what? well defined the keyword arguments, uh, you have to write a, oh, this is teeny. Like, it go, goes like, uh, uh, retrieve the last, last argument as, in, as a hash for the arguments, then check the uh, existence of the keyword arguments and the, with, or, with the default values, and the, then the other ones. So the raise exceptions when, when uh, you don't have the uh, you have you have the the unknown keyword is given, then go like this. This is quite complex, but in Ruby 2.0 uh, we try to simplify things. So the this same things is go like this. Just put the, the keyword arguments here, then you don't have to worry about the, the uh, raising errors and the default values or anything. Then go like the, comparing this and that, very simple, isn't it? So the keyword arguments in Ruby 2 are is simpler and more, more descriptive API, easy to read, easy to write. So the things is very uh, less complicated. And then you can pass the existing, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you can pass the existing hashes, uh, the keyword arguments, like a double, uh, double star. And then you can accept the, here it is, the ar arbitrary keyword arguments as a hash. So if, if you specify this kind of uh, hash, of the default hash, so unknown keyword do not raise er any errors. Without this one, the unknown keyword raise errors. So easy API, the more descriptive, and the Rails pre prefer keyword arguments. So Rails, uh, Rails 4 use the keyword arguments if you run it by Ruby 2.0. This is keyword arguments. So then, go next. Uh, module prepend. Module prepend the, 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 in a form of the method combination. The, it's uh, decorating existing methods. It's kind of like an alias method change, but the decorate existing method with use, uh, which is the alias method change used the, the uh, existing method using aliases. It's defined in active support. Alias method change goes like this. Uh, class A defines the foo method. So, then you define the, the de decoration method with bar, then else method chain, foo, bar, then uh, you call foo, then the alias method chain calls the A with bar, then we name the original foo as the A foo with a bar, then go like this, then go like this. So, the, the definition of the element met method change is pretty simple using meta, uh, meta programming. Like a, the or, uh, renamed or original method as a uh, original method without uh, features. Then rename the method with, with foo feature in the original method, the replaced original method. So the, uh, what, what, which way? <laughs> Then the foo with bar is defined as foo. Then the original foo is foo without bar. Then calling foo calls foo with bar. Then foo without bar calls original foo. Then go back to the, then uh, the, you can decorate the original method with the new, new method. Do you understand? This is pretty complicated. So the alias method chain has some kind of the, the defect and the problems. So many public methods they spelled out like uh, the with with something or without something. So and uh, accidental feature name conflict. So adding some feature set to class. Same to adding same feature set to class. So the if you can, you have the some set of the class then you have to call the, uh, every, um, 
many uh, alias method chain for the, that kind of the, the set of methods. So the, we uh, investigated the method combination, which is uh, provided by the common list object system to access the existing method. So the, the, the method combination in common list, it can be configured with the meta object protocol. And then standard combination in common list object system has a before hook, which is invoked by the, the original method, after hook, which is invoked after the original method, and the around hook, which is wrapped the original method. But uh, and, uh, since it is configured via method, uh, meta object protocol, so you can provide uh, some kind of the and combination, which is the try uh, many variation of the, the method, and then either of them, uh, the all of them, if all of them succeeded, the method, method execution has done. Or any of them failed, the execution of the uh, uh, method is failed. Or the all combination is uh, just the reverse of the under combination. Or the, you can define whatever combination in, in common lisp. But uh, it, I think it's too complex for Ruby, so I, we, I introduced more simple, uh, simplified method combination, which is method uh, module prepend. Uh, module prepend is a module added by include comes after existing methods, but uh, module pre uh, methods added by the module prepend comes before the existing method to wrap, method, wrap original method. So using uh, module prepend, you can do the, 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 the original food, then uh, wrap, you can wrap the existing method in the, me in the a module, then you can prepend the, the module. So the method defined the, in the, the food class comes after the prepended the method. So you can wrap the existing method without using any um, alias method chain. So the, you, by using module prepend, you can extend the existing methods. Then you don't have to worry about the, the method name conflict. And then you can package the set of the uh, decoration in a module like the, the module prepend, prepend, prepend the module. <clears throat> so, that's, that's much simpler than the alias method chain, or uh, common method combination in common list. So, refinements. Uh, refinements is the kind of scope of monkey patching. And uh, monkey patching is, it, is pretty popular in Ruby, especially in the active support. So, revolve for existing class and module, added methods, replacing methods, removing methods, you can do every, whatever you want. But the, it, is, it is effective globally. So you replace the existing method. So you will, you will have uh, unexpected result sometimes. But uh, the example is active support. So using active support, you can call that 20 years ago. <laughs> and then, uh, the, the other example is a math end, which is the, uh, which is bundled in the standard distribution. So you, when you call, uh, require the library name the math end, you can, <laughs> the, this has the very effective. Okay, well the one divided by two becomes zero in standard Ruby, just because it's integer division. But uh, you, by requiring math end, a library, the, that it replaces the div division method, division. So one divided by two became the one divided by two. It's a rational number, <laughs> rational number. So this is quite impressive. So very teeny library can replace the very fundamental integer division. But it replaces that every integer division. So you, the, the other part of the library, or other part of the, your software, might require integer division. One, by, one divided by two equals zero. 
So what, ha what would happen? The crash, error, unexpected result? That's not good. That's not good. The, the global, global uh, modification is basically a bad thing. So the open class is so strong. So uh, that could happen the name, name conflict or behavior conflict. So the global modification is bad. So the scope, you, can, you want to scope your modification in certain aspects. So refinements is that kind of the, the scope. So, oops. You define a module, and in, in module, you, you can refine the existing class, and then you can add, add method, you can replace method, well, whatever you want. Then, so th that refinement will not aff effective outside of the uh, refinement scope. <coughs> but when you call using the refinement module, so you can refine, uh, you can call the refine method. So the, the default is no, re no refinement at all. So you don't have to worry about the scope, uh, the, the global modification. The, there are some other language, like a, uh, the language named the small script, which is a dialect of the small talk, which is the, the feature named the selector namespace. And uh, the, we have the, the feature named the class box for the language like small talk in Java. And then you can extend methods in the, for the language like C, C sharp. And the uh, selector namespace, uh, about, no one knows small script. Do you know that? So, then uh, I, I'm not sure Smalltalk is still, still alive. And uh, the, the feature of the, the small script is very complex. So I just gave up to adopt the uh, names, selector namespace in Ruby. And the class box is a scope to class modification, but it has a very interesting feature named the local rebinding. The local rebinding means that you, you will, uh, the modification in that class box is effective. Uh, in the method, you can call from that, um, uh, that scope. You know that? That means that you refine, well, for example, that you refine the, the, the shape of the uh, GUI button in that the specific scope. So you call to uh, create call a method to create a dialog. So the, the method to write the button shape is replaced. So the sh shape of, is the dialog button is uh, the changed. But it also, the local rebinding is very strong, but at the same time, the, you may have that kind of the behavior conflict in the me method called from your method. You, I think you, 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 have full, you don't have full control of the method called from the method called by your scope. The method called by uh, your scope, then the method called from that, that method, that method, then, then. So it's, it's too, de too uh, strong. It's kind of like a dynamic scope in the Lisp language. So I just, just gave up that, the more, more simplified the scope to monkey patching. And uh, the extended method in C sharp can only add methods, no replacing, so which is not uh, what we want. So the refinement is called the monkey patching. And then, then the <laughs> unfortunately, uh, right before the release of the Ruby 2.0, the very deep, deep and uh, uh, heated discussion ha has held for the, the refinement. So the the Ruby uh, we had had to mark the, the refinement, if, which is very interesting and useful feature, but but we had to mark it as uh, experimental. So the the other implementation of the Ruby language, like JRuby, Rubinius, will not uh, provide the refinements in the foreseeable future. Um, that's uh, that's unfortunate. <coughs> anyway, then next, number of lazy. 
Uh, enable of lazy is kind of like a lazy uh, evaluation that, that we see in the, some kind of the functional programming language. Uh, it's inspired by the functional programming language and uh, uh, we, <laughs> for functional programming wannabe. Uh, we have the, <laughs> anyway, uh, as a functional programming wannabe, we often use immutable data, the pattern matching, lazy evaluation, the function competition. And then, uh, what? The fun function comp the in in immutable, <laughs> immutable data is, is kind of like a, uh, you know, you can, you can modify every data, struct data structure in Ruby. You can replace, uh, modify a string, you can modify the uh, array, uh, you can modify any object. But uh, you, you, can, you can freeze them, and then you, you, don't, you, you, you do avoid uh, uh, modifying uh, object as a rule. So then, then, then the functional composition is kind of like a method combination in Ruby. So the, we, as a functional program wannabe, we often use the method change, like one through uh, infinity, uh, uh, convert them to the, the strings, then it, if it, it has a digit, digit three, so we, have, we want to have the first five appearance of that uh, from the stream. So, but if you try this one, it doesn't work. You know that? <laughs> so the map here is very lazy. I, I, I mean, they're very eager, unlike me. So <laughs> it created the infinite number of strings as an array. And then it gradually consumed all the memory in the computer, so it's crushed. So, but if we had lazy evaluation, the, we, we only have, need, to, need five appearance. So if we are lazy, we have, the, uh, we have lazily uh, convert the number to strings. We are lazily select uh, these strings f from three. Then we have first five appearance of that kind of, uh, uh, five, that, numbers, so we just stop. So what do we have the lazy version of the NRL method? So the, the first <laughs> proposal was a, the map lazy, select lazy, so that these methods with the LZ, uh, the shorter hand of the uh, lazy, just because we are lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that goes like this, so map lazily, then select lazily, then first five, that get the first five appearance of the stream. But uh, lazy people need lazy evaluation. But uh, we are too lazy to add the, the LZ prefix all the time. So maybe, maybe we forget to put lazy here or put lazy here. So the, the other, uh, one is that put lazy here. The, from now on, the every uh, enumerable uh, method will go, go lazy. So it looks better. So, oh, it looks better. So the, from Ruby 2.0, uh, if you put lazy here, to the any an, a number of object, so the uh, the the stream exec execution will be la uh, evaluated lazily. So, and uh, we will have we are going to have the symbol array literals in Ruby 2.0 goes like this: is uh, the array of the symbol foo bar bars. So, and then we have two H conversion methods like a hash and struct have the two H. So the you, you can have, yeah, okay. <laughs> we have the conversion method to i and to in, to is, and to throw, to h and to hash. Yeah, we have the, this new set pair of the method. 
So two i convert uh, object into integer, and two int uh, implicitly convert object into an integer. So two s and two two uh, sura is same, and two h and two hash is same. Eh, then next, UDF eight by default. So the we, when I designed the multilingualization for one nine, the Unicode is not yet was not yet, yet a champion of the, of the character encoding. But uh, more than five years later now, so almost everyone uses Unicode. So the, almost every website uses Unicode, mostly UDF-8. So the, we make uh, Unicode, especially UDF-8, as a champion of the, uh, the uh, character encoding. So you don't have to put the magic encoding to, to mention this, this uh, file is written in UTF-8. And uh, we see Unicode everywhere now. And DTRS and trace point, uh, the, it's a better uh, de debug and uh, profile support. So you can write a debug, uh, better debugger or a better profiler using DTRS and trace point. So, and uh, we try to improve, improve the performance, and then uh, we, uh, we hacked the virtual machine, we, we improved the garbage collector, and uh, uh, we improved the require. So that we, you know, in the program like Rails application has the, the ten, tons of the Ruby gems required. So the, the requiring you pass is so long, so you have to look into the huge set of the, the, the loading path. So we try to improve that kind of uh, re require step. So the, the invocation time of the Rails application uh, come, uh, improved a lot. So Ruby 2.0 is kind of like a, you know, the working under the uh, community, and uh, you, so you don't, you don't have to worry about the internal, so we improve the language and its implementation so that you can have the faster, better language for your application. So the, I have no idea about the, the beyond Ruby 2.0, but uh, we made a Ruby 2.1 branch already, so the, I hope the Ruby 2.1 will come in next Christmas, I mean, I mean this Christmas this year, and we will see more frequent releases. The 1.9.3 has the past level 300 something. <laughs> we, had, we had a lot of uh, past levels and, and, uh, with uh, uh, three, two, three years of the lifetime of the, the single release. So we, I think we will have the more frequent releases, uh, probably once a year for the Ruby 2.1. This year will be 2.2 .2 next year or something like that. And then uh, I tried, we are working on the less strict Unicode validation or even better performance and, uh, and uh, we are working on the partial generation garbage collector. So that's what we have right now. <laughs> so the Ruby 2.0 is the happiest release ever. So the, the better, the best uh, release ever. So please uh, switch to Ruby 2.0 uh, very soon, so thank you. <laughs>